Hi, I'm Lucas, and today I'm going to talk about TimeCrypt. TimeCrypt is an encrypted time series data store that protects data from unwanted disclosure while uh, enabling for secure sharing at the same time. This is joint work with Anwar Hidnavi, Alexander Viad, Hossein Shafak, and Silvia Ratnasami. So this talk is all about time series data. Time series data is mostly data that is taken at continuous points in time. But what I want to motivate here is that time series data is actually emerging everywhere and in greater volumes than ever. This is mostly due to the fact that it's becoming easier and more affordable than ever to monitor complex systems and things in general. Consider, for example, a modern car. A modern car is equipped with hundreds of sensors that are constantly gathering telemetry about the state of the car. Or uh, in the health domain, where we see the trend of wearing wearables to monitor human well-being in real time. Other examples are DevOps and monitoring in data centers, or the Internet of Things in general, where we put sensors nearly everywhere, for example, in smart factories or smart homes. So a typical time series data processing pipeline consists of these automated data sources that are constantly pushing data into a cloud infrastructure. From there, the data is shared with third-party services and applications to gain actually utility out of this data. Another important aspect of these pipelines is that the data that is processed is, is actually quite sensitive, especially if you consider, for example, health data or even the data from your car. So if something happens in these pipelines, if a server gets compromised, if a data breach happens, or an entity gets access that should not have access to this data, this results in privacy risks. And if we consider that this, uh, this increasing volumes of time series data and the fact that data breaches are pretty common, I think it's very important to think about how to protect this data from unwanted disclosure. So one promising approach to tackle this challenge is actually encrypted data processing. In encrypted data processing, data is encrypted end-to-end, -end, which means that data is not only encrypted while it is in transit and addressed, but also while we process the data on the storage side. There has actually been a large uh, body of research on building encrypted storage systems for different kinds of workloads. So the natural questions that actually arises out of this is, can we actually also enable encrypted data processing for time series workloads? So time series workloads have actually unique performance and security requirements that existing encrypted data processing systems fail to meet. So now, now let me elaborate on the two main challenges that we try to address in this work. So the first challenge is scalability and interactivity. So time series workloads are inherently different. So in time series workloads, inserts happen most often, most often to the most recent time interval and all data is not changed anymore. The queries that are executed on top of this data are mostly of statistical form and over different time ranges. So a time series storage needs to handle high throughput writes, so a large, large volumes of data are actually written into the storage, and they need to support these low latency queries on top of large volumes of data. There is actually a wide range of systems or a wide range of specialized time series uh, storage systems that actually optimize based on the characteristics of time series data to actually meet these requirements. Now, if we just take existing encrypted data processing systems and port them to time series workload, they actually fail to meet the scalability and latency requirements because of the large uh, encryption overhead. So our contribution here is actually to design a system which actually meets these requirements while providing encrypted data processing at the same time. We achieve this by introducing an uh, encryption construction that actually is optimized towards time series workloads. The second challenge that we address is secure sharing. In this, sto in this storage, often data is written from multiple sources and then consumed by multiple services. Hence, secure sharing is a, uh, is a very important part of these pipelines. With end-to-end -end uh, encryption, sharing actually entails giving the key to a third-party service. With this key, the third-party service can actually decrypt all the data that is stored in the uh, storage. <coughs> However, most of the time, these applications and services only need a small subset of the data to gain actually the uh, intended utility out of it. So if we give services more uh, access that they actually need to, we again have these privacy risks. So what we want to have here is that the data owner should actually be able to define access policies which, which restrict services on what they can actually access. So a service should, be only to, should, a service should only be able to decrypt data that is within its access policy. 
With time theory workloads, sharing semantics to define these policies are mostly time intervals, so you only want to share a certain time interval of your data and resolution. For example, you only want to share daily averages of your heart rate and not the hourly averages. Resolution is important because uh, lower resolutions um, often reveal less info information than the higher resolutions. So if we consider this example here, this person might want to share its heart rate in daily averages with its insurance, um, the raw data in the duration of its sickness with the doctor, and the hourly averages uh, in the dura duration of the workout with its trainer. So the challenge is how we actually can, can enable this share, sharing semantics cryptographically along with the uh, encrypted data processing in a unified system. So we address these challenges uh, with TimeCrypt. TimeCrypt is a system that where data is encrypted end to end. We support all the scalable computation over large volumes of time series data while enabling this sharing semantics of sharing intervals of data and resolution. TimeCrypt supports all the key functionalities that other time series data uh, processing pipelines support. And in addition, we also support verifiable computation where clients can also verify that their uh, query was actually executed correctly. However, in this talk, I want to focus on the encrypted data processing part and the sharing access, uh, the access control part. So now let me show you how TimeCrypt actually uh, augments existing time, time series storages. So in TimeCrypt, they introduce a so-called client module. The client module serves as a proxy for the data producer to write data into the system and for the data consumer to query data from the system. In TimeCrypt, the data producer is fully trusted and is in possession of a so-called master secret. With this master secret and the client module, the data producer writes data into the system. The client module transforms this data, encrypts it, and forwards it to the time series storage. The time series storage only sees encrypted data and never sees plain text as a data in the clear. A client can issue queries by again contacting the client module. The client module forwards the query to the time series storage. The storage processes this query on top of encrypted data and returns the result. What I want to highlight here is that the data consumer should, aim, should only be able to decrypt the query if it's within its specified access policy. In TimeCrypt, access policies are defined by the data owner. The data owner could be the same entity as the data producer or just a subgroup of data producers. So now let me show you how we actually write data into TimeCrypt to enable scalable computation. So in TimeCrypt, we leverage the characteristics of time series data and batch data on the client side in fixed time windows. The window size remains uh, constant throughout the stream. So the data that is within this window, window uh, is put into a raw data chunk, which is encrypted with standard symmetric encryption. On top of that, we add a so-called aggregatable digest. The aggregatable digest just contains summaries about the underlying raw data. The aggregatable, the aggregatable digest is encrypted with an encryption scheme that, are, a encryption scheme that allows for uh, computation. So the server, the idea is actually that the server can compute the low, low latency queries on top of this aggregatable digest while the raw data remains in storage and is only accessed if the client requests raw data access. So now how do we compute on this aggregatable digest? In TimeCrypt, we leverage so-called additive homomorphic encryption to encrypt the aggregatable digest. Additive homomorphic encryption allows you to perform additions on, the, additions on top of encrypted data. We leverage additive homomorphic encryption because fully homomorphic or general proposed homomorphic encryption is still too expensive to meet actually the scalability requirements of time series workloads. However, then the question pops up, how can we actually support statistics that go beyond just addition? Because we can only support additions on the server side. So in TimeCrypt, the idea is that we leverage just known encoding techniques and transform most of these statistical queries into aggregation-based queries. For example, if you want to compute the average, we just compute the aggregation of the sum on the server side, aggregation on the count, of the count on the server side, and then compute the uh, average on the client side by dividing the sum through the count. However, even if you use more efficient additive hom homomorphic encryption, if you use conventional schemes that are based on asymmetric cryptography, they are still quite expensive. So we have huge ciphertext expansion, addition times are uh, way more expensive uh, on the server side, and we have client side processing time of encryption and decryption. So 
to overcome this problem in time crypt, the idea is to uh, co-design the cryptographic construction along with the characteristics of time series data. The core building block of time crypt encryption is um, symmetric homomorphic encryption. In symmetric homomorphic encryption, the idea is that each message is encrypted with a unique fresh random key, which is added to the message, modulus and parameter m. This scheme is semantically secure as long as you always use a fresh random key for each message. Now in time crypt, we slightly modify this scheme, so instead of just adding a key, uh, key, we always subtract the next key. So each message is actually encrypted with a unique pair of keys. This scheme is still semantically secure as long as we have always a unique pair of keys. The benefit of this is now that if we have now in-range aggregations, as commonly observed in time series databases, the inner keys always actually cancel out. So this is good because now if we add thousands of messages together in range, the inner keys always cancel out and we always only need two keys to decrypt the messages or to decrypt the query. So with this scheme, we have actually a very nice scheme that has nearly no ciphertext expansion, fast aggregation times and nearly no encryption decryption costs. What is here missing here, however, is that in semantic homomorphic encryption, clients or the decrypting clients need actually to know which keys have been used for encryption. So to overcome this challenge in TimeCrypt, we introduce a so-called key stream to time encoding. So the idea here is that in TimeCrypt, each stream starts at a certain timestamp T0 and then proceeds in fixed time windows. So now if we assign a key to each of the border timestamps of these time windows, we actually directly introduce a mapping from keys to time. So now if you, for example, query T0 to T3, the client directly knows that he, uh, she or she needs the key zero or key three to decrypt the message. So now we have seen how we can process data in time period quite efficiently. So now the question uh, remains how we uh, enable access control. So with this key stream to time encoding, access control actually boils down to sharing keys with another party. <laughs> so to enable interval-based sharing, the idea is just to share the keys which are within this interval. The drawback of this approach is now that if I share a large interval, I have to share each key individually with the other party, which is not very efficient. Uh, in uh, in TimeCrypt, we solve this challenge by a technique called tree-based key derivation. So the idea is that on the client side, the data producer starts with a master secret and uh, applies a so-called pseudorandom number generator. And then we generate two new nonces. And then we just recursively apply the same technique again and again. And then we create like a, a tree of, or the binary tree of keys. And the leaf, leaf nodes of this tree are actually the keys that we are using for encryption. So the nice thing about, the, about this tree based key derivation is now that if we share an inner node of this tree, the entity who is in possession of this inner node can actually derive all the keys which are within its subtree, but no keys that are outside of this subtree. This is because uh, of the one-way property of this pseudonym number generator. So the tree-based key generation actually enables to very efficiently share ranges of keys. So now, how do we enable actually access restrictions at resolution uh, level? So what if we want to restrict, for example, that the service can only query daily aggregates instead of, for example, hourly aggregates. The idea here is, again, that we leverage the key cancelling. So what you can see here is a standard uh, stream in TimeCrypt. And now if we go uh, one resolution lower and perform pairwise aggregation, we can actually observe that in the, uh, the higher resolution, some keys uh, appear that in the lower resolution don't appear. So to actually enable uh, access control on top of this, the idea is that we just share the outer keys of, uh, of these windows. So an entity which is in possession of this outer key can decrypt the lower resolution, but not the higher resolution because some keys have canceled out. What is missing here is now that, again, we cannot use the efficient key sharing technique because now keys are, uh, again, out of order. In the paper, we actually introduce a technique how we can share these keys efficiently, again, with envelope uh, encryption and key derivation trees. However, uh, in sake of time, I don't consider this in the now, so if you're interested, just check, just, just check the paper. So the concepts of TypeCrypt are actually, actually widely, uh, widely applicable in all sorts of time series uh, pipelines. Uh, in, the, uh, in, in the paper, we uh, provide a prototype on top of Cassandra, and now I want to show you how TimeCrypt actually performs on real-world workloads. 
So in this talk, I want to, to consider a hash to, a health dashboard application, health dashboard application, which is one of the applications that we actually evaluate evaluate on. So in this health dashboard application, data comes from this medical sensor, which const is constantly pushing heart rate data. And the dashboard application just shows nice summaries about the heart rate data. Um, to simulate the real world uh, workload, we consider 100 clients, and each client uh, performs one chunk inserts and four query range queries. Uh, the data that we have here, or the data streams that uh, we have here, are 50 hertz, and we have 10 second chunks. So now what we can see here is actually the right throughput into the system uh, in plain text. So in plain text, we, uh, we observe a throughput of around 5.7 million records per second. With TimeCrypt, we actually only induce uh, like a 2% overhead and are like really close to uh, operating on plain text data. With TimeCrypt Plus, we also integrate verification on top of that. So this adds an additional uh, overhead, but we are still close or with, as within 10% of uh, operating on plain text data. On the right side, you can see other encryption systems that are used in other encrypted data processing systems. And what you can see here that we outperform them by, uh, by at least 2x. For the query throughput, we can actually observe exactly the same be uh, behavior. So we are, actually, we are actually meeting the scalability uh, requirements of time series workloads. So another important metric I want to show you is uh, the latency. So in these dashboards, uh, they, in these dashboards, these dashboards actually show like different kind of plots. And what you can see here is actually one month of data, of heart rate data, and how long it takes to query this one month of data, of data in different resolutions to plot it in the dashboard. What I want to highlight here is that also in latency, TimeCrypt is actually quite close to plain text, so we introduce only like a 20% overhead uh, for hourly uh, resolutions. Um, the overhead increases linearly with the resolution because we simply have to decrypt more data. Yeah. So the outcoming of this, yeah, TimeCrypt actually meets the performance and scalability requirements and yeah, actually performs quite close to plain text data. So to summarize, TimeCrypt is a system that augments existing time series data stores with uh, encrypted data processing capabilities. It protects the confidentiality of the data while enabling this uh, selective sharing of data with third party services. We introduce a cryptographic construction which uh, couples encrypted data processing with access control for time series data streams. The code of TimeCrypt is actually available at timecrypt.io, uh, so if you're, interest, if you're interested, check the code. Thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Um, so, so you mentioned you have verifiability in your systems. So like the problem with these symmetrical morphic encryption is typically like the malleability, right? So you can't yeah, exactly, kind of yeah. XOR whatever you want, and then you yeah. can't really detect it. So how do you handle that when you're actually operating on the data? Because um, typical Macs are not Yeah, so what we, we, what we are using is so-called symmetric homomorphic Macs. So with this, we can actually provide. I see. So, so these Macs are actually pretty efficient, though, still, somehow. Yeah, they are oh, still super efficient. They are way more efficient than zero knowledge proofs. But, um, but yeah, because we have this time to key encoding, we, we, we directly know what kind of query we want to expect. And that's why we can use this. Uh, homomorphic max quite oh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. okay. But okay. check the paper if you're interested in this. Yeah. So, kind of curious about the uh, trust model. Yeah. So it seems uh, the cloud provider is malicious, and the data consumer is uh, curious, but 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 honest, right? Yeah. So whether it's uh, possible, say, for the you know the administrator of the cloud provider can you know, uh, fake, uh, build a fake account, you know, as the data consumer and to collude with the data consumer. And, you know, in that case, a data consumer could be malicious and they can collude to leak some information, you know, from the, the encryption, you know, cipher text and do some malicious things. I'm just curious about that. Yeah, so great question. Yeah, thanks. So the question is, uh, what happens actually if the cloud provider yeah. colludes with data consumer or the yeah. impersonates as a data exactly. consumer? So the threat model that we have in TimeCrypt is that, uh, data consumers should only have access to the data that are, is defined yeah. within their access policy. So right. if uh, a data consumer shares keys, 
with, for example, a cloud provider that is malicious, the cloud provider should only be able to decrypt data that is within its access. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the approach. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Actually, can I ask a quick question? Because yeah. uh, I, I liked it very much, uh, uh, and I know nothing about this area. As no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, is, it, uh, is it true that all, a lot of this time series data is actually being generated by, say, sensors or automated uh, sources of data, right? Uh, is it possible for an attacker to just attack one of the sensors and mess up all the statistical queries or results just by inflecting some specific kind of data? I know it's outside your threat model. I'm just very curious. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, if uh, an attacker can impersonate a data producer, the data producer can just send arbitrary data and then queries for sure are different, yeah, and would not match up anymore. Even and with a small number of, say, there are thousand sensors, but even one sensor yeah. the attacker can control and then it will mess up everything? Yeah, as a, I mean, if this sensor then is included in the queries, then as these sensors could mess up, yeah, could yeah, manipulate the whole query. Yeah, we cannot cool. prevent this, yeah. Perfect. Let's thank the speaker once again. <laughs>